to be faced, uh, you know, with the worst moment in, in the history of Nigeria's economy to do better than just talk. All right, on our interview segment, we will be deliberating on the effect of fuel scarcity on the Nigerian economy. We will also look at the debate over the use of gen genetically modified foods. Now, GMOs, as they are popularly known, are foods derived from organisms whose genetic material has been modified in a way that does not occur naturally. Mm. That is certainly a very interesting topic. Was through the introduction of a gene from a different organism currently available to basically modify foods and mostly from plants, but in the future food derived from genetically modified microorganisms or animals are likely to be introduced on the market. Now, most existing genetically modified foods have been developed to improve yield, though the introduction of resistance, uh, through the introduction of resistance by your pattern to plant diseases or increased tolerance of herbicides. In the future, genetic, genetically modified food could be aimed at altering the nutrient content of food, reducing its allergenic potential or improving the efficiency of food production systems. Well, genetically modified food has on the world uh, the genetically modified food, also known as genetically modified organisms, is most commonly used to um, refer to crop plants created from human or animal, for human or animal consumption using the latest um, molecular biology techniques. For well, the reason these plants are being modified today is when it is designed to form potential trees for resistance to herbicides, I could tell you earlier, uh, nutritional content. One of the benefits that genetically modified foods may offer, there are also some risks and negative effects that these foods can cause as well. And one of the most important effects to go organic. Then I'm sure you'll be averse to genetically modified foods. I mean, right now we still have people who prefer not to use any processed food, they prefer to go to the market and buy the fresh tomato, you know, blend it, you know, boil it, and put it in the fridge, and then while I'm going by and take the tomato, you already processed tomato, and it's for your cooking. So I'm sure it's the kind of discussion that will interest you. So do stay with us on this show, don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break now. The show will continue. For being there with us. We'll be looking at the debate over the dangers of genetically modified foods in all parts of the world. It's a growing debate at the moment. There are those who are for it and there are those who say, no, you're taking us to things that are unnatural. We'll be talking about that. Um, yes, indeed, we have joining us. We have um, Rufus E. Egbega, Director General, CEO, National Bio Safety Management Agency. He's joining us from Abuja Centre here. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you. Join us. Okay. Um, also joining us is uh, Badebo Roots Viva, the convener Nigerians against genetically modified org organism GMO. He's joining us from Lagos. Um, Mr. Rhodes, nice to have you join us. Uh, let's, let's start from very basics now. What really is a genetically modified food or organism? Thank you very much. The issue of uh, the controversy surrounding, surrounding genetically modified organism, this need to really clarify some certain things. There have been a lot of misconception about these uh, uh, products. Genetically modified organisms are not synthetic materials. They are not manufactured, they are normal crops, they are normal plants, like a normal organism, like any organism that was created by God from the beginning of time. But you will remember that despite the fact that 
these things were created from God from the origin of living things. These things have undergone, all living things have undergone evolution drastically from primitivity to higher level. Let me now say genetically modified organisms. These um, organisms, either plants or animals, that another material from another related organism, either vitamin A, move from carrot into cassava. The cassava becomes genetically modified. This process takes place in the lab. What is simply done in the lab is that the gene of interest that you want, that is the material that confers any trait that you are interested in, you want to move it from another organism into another. It is, it, it is selected in the lab and it is gene specific. And genetically modified organisms are not the same. The method of arri arriving at them are not the same. There are different methods. You have, you, you have genetically modified organisms that can be developed either to fight a drought, they want to enhance the nutrient of any organism. They want to fight disease. They want to fight pests. They want to be tolerant to herbicide. Simply says genetically modified or organism that material from unrelated organism moved into another. So does it, does it alter that. the natural composition no. of the original? No, it does not. Or, what is simply that. there is that as me you move vitamin A from cassava from carrot to cassava, the only thing that will be there is that vitamin A. How does that it does apply? not it does not change the, the gene composition of the organism. In that case, what we look, I'm a, I'm a regulator. We don't promote this technology. Neither do we promote genetically modified organism. Mm -hmm. But we are not against either. All we do is to ensure that it is safe mm -hmm. for human consumption. How, how, how safe is it? We're talking of plants now. Mm -hmm. if, if we gravitate into animals, mm -hmm. how safe is it? How is the process in animals like? The process in animals is similar to the that of the of the plants. What you simply that I said is for you to move. For example, if you want an animal to grow faster, you can identify gene that is a growth hormone from another organism that grows very fast. Then you put it in, 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 into the genome of the gene of the, of the animal, and that animal will not, when it replicates, it has the ability to grow faster. But there's a term we use in regulation substantial equivalence. You analyze, and this takes between 7, 10, 15 years, because the risk assessment is systematically analyzed to ensure that there are no differences of the organism that have been modified from the conventional counterparts. Mm. All right, let's go to um, Mr. Badibo Rhodes in, in Lagos. Badibo, you, you've heard our guest here um, explain what it is, um, what uh, GMOs do. Do you have anything against, you know, genetically modified organisms? And if you do, what will that be? I'd like to differ and I'll add some layers to the definition that the gentleman in the studio just gave you. Um, most of the things that we actually stand against as regards genetically modified foods are one, the reasons why these products are actually modified. So for instance now, there are companies that sell herbicides and pesticides. They modify foods so that those foods can actually um, absorb or resist the toxic effects of the herbicides and pesticides that they make. So everything that is sprayed around dies, but the plant that has been modified will survive. And then also another factor is once you plant these things, when they grow, you cannot replant those seeds anymore. You have to go back to the company that, that made these seeds and buy from them again. So there are several factors that the gentleman in the studio has not explained. There's a dependency factor. There's the, there are the health concerns that are associated with it. There are the ecological concerns that are associated with it. For instance, we cannot separate or divorce these genetically modified foods, especially the ones that are being, um, that people are making applications to bring into Nigeria on a commercial basis, from the pesticides and herbicides and toxins. We cannot divorce it from the effect that it has on the smallholder farmer which is where monocropping, large amounts of monocropping have to be done because unlike our traditional ways of planting where you can intercrop with different other plants, with, genet with genetically modified um, plants, you have to have monocropping, which kills diversity, 
in the ecosystem as well. We cannot divorce it from the ecological effect, where, for instance, once you modify a plant, you then have replicas of the same genes. So when one disease comes, it can technically kill all of them. The reason why humanity has survived for so long is because our genes have the ability, because of the diversity in our gene pool, to resist certain diseases. So somebody can get a cold, or the next person next to you will not get it. That's how intricate our genetic system is. Once you start manipulating that and creating clones, they become more, um, they become more susceptible to diseases that can then wipe all of them out. So there are many other layered factors on top of this. It's not as simple as we just modify um, a plant in the farm, in the lab, and all of a sudden now we can grow it and it has no effects. There are effects. There are health concerns, and that's why the European Union has addressed these health concerns with the legislation that they've put in place. There are health concerns that um, affect all the pesticides and herbicides that are sprayed on these plants. That's why Argentina is going through what it's going through. That's why several countries have taken steps to regulate and, in most situations, ban the growth of these products. So it's not as simplistic as the gentleman in the studio has just explained. Well, you, you talked about some of the dangers associated with this, and um, I, I want you to highlight what some of those dangers are, because there are people who uh, are, are so scared about it and already freaked out about it and saying, oh, most of the cancers we are seeing now, which never existed before, might have some link to this GMOs. Uh, is that true? The, um, the gentleman in the studio spoke about substantial equivalents. Um, in, the, in the House of Rep in America, um, Senator Konichi, he came and said that in 1992, when the FDA of America made this claim that genetically modified foods is substantial equivalents of regular foods, they had done this without any testing, contrary to what the gentleman in the studio is saying. They had done this without any testing. They had done this with the FDA's own scientists warning them about potential horizontal gene transfer that will happen when these things are consumed by the human body. They, they had done this with all of several millions of Americans writing to them and saying they shouldn't do this, and several million Americans actually calling for labeling so that they will know about genetically modified foods. Instead, they did it serving more the corporate interests as opposed to, be, as opposed to the people's interests. There have been several studies, independent studies that have been done that have documented cases in rats, in mice, in cows, in animals that have been fed genetically modified foods, having tumors, having cancers, having stomach infections, also disruptions to their endocrine system, which also leads to reproductive failure. And also then there's there are the concerns of all these pesticides that go hand in hand with these um, genetically modified foods. When rain falls and they run off into water bodies, they get contaminated. When this technology was first introduced, there was a claim that these chemicals were biodegradable. It has since claimed, it has since been seen to be false. They are not biodegradable, and all these companies had to take that label off their products. So you find that all these chemicals stay. And there's something called bioaccumulation that happens on the plants and then also happens in the human body. So, for instance, you see that a lot of these chemicals remain in the um, milk, breast milk of mothers that are lactating. In Argentina, all the people that live around where all these farms exist have these things in their bloodstream as well. And it has led to birth defects and several things that have happened in Argentina. So, um, several scientists, independent scientists, who have had corporations going against their research and shutting them out, have shown extensively the damage that this can do. And the fact of the matter is we have to understand what science is now in this world. It's regulated by, it's, it's regulated by corporations because corporations fund research. Gone are the days where a scientist just humbly works in his lab and tries to create things for the betterment of humanity. Science has evolved to the point where now you need corporations to fund your research. When corporations fund your research, they tell you what they are looking for. They tell you what your research is looking to say. So you look to independent scientists that have done a lot of work, made personal sacrifices, just like, for instance, in the tobacco industry, for almost 10 years, the tobacco companies were saying and employing a lot of people to say that tobacco is not linked to cancer, smoking is not linked to cancer. Doctors were coming on TV and saying, smoking is actually good for your health. 
And then later on, it came out to be seen that these companies knew that these things were causing cancer, but they paid several professionals to mislead and create ignorance to the public. And then over time, people started to know and understand that there is definitely a linkage between cancer and cigarettes. These things take time because it's usually pushed by the independent scientists and it's done against a lot of force in terms of money, in terms of political lobby, and several other interests that are looking to make mono, um, looking to create a monopoly and make a lot of money with this um, system. So it's money first over the consumer's health, or the consumers are going to eat it, and even like the um, control of food in the country. Um, Rufus, obviously there's a worldwide debate um, on this matter and uh, Mr. Vivers explained you know, where the interests of corporate organizations um, lie in all of this as against uh, public health and public opinion. If there's still a debate you know, on this, is, is there any reason why Nigeria is interested or rushing to embrace uh, genetically modified foods? I'm particularly happy that uh, I'm here so that Nigerians can know, know the truth. The world is ruled by so many factors. But the changes, changes in the world are ruled by technology, science, politics, and economics. It made reference to the issue of poor economy, and I want to let you know that the issue of genetically modified organisms, let me make it known. I don't defend the technology, neither do I support or against it. I regulate it. But as a regulator, I need to have enough information to enable me to take informed decisions. Yeah. One, the issue of genetically modified organisms. When we talk about the issue of herbicide, the genetically modified organism does not contain the herbicide. Neither is the herbicide genetically modified, no. The organism is you know, developed in a way to resist against, to have the ability to tolerate herbicide, that it means the herbicide will not affect the, the plant. And the insect resistance and also the disease resistance they say the, the organism is also developed to have ability to resist against the insect, or against the, to resist against the, the, the insect and the disease. In that context, less chemicals are used, unlike the conventional one, where you just use, you, you may up to four, up to 10 or more times. But genetically modified organisms that are resistant to other pests or, or diseases, you may not spray more than once or twice. So which of them is more injurious to the environment? The GMOs are not with G they are not, they don't have any chemical in them. Uh, has, your, the has your organization also done your own independent research that defines or guides your regulatory role in most of some of these organizations? I don't know uh, GMOs, I don't know how much of it have come into Nigeria so far, but have you also carried on out your own independent investigation, forensic empirical yes. investigations? Into yes. Well, I want to speak well, your yes, yes, I have not actually finished what I was saying. Yes. What I want to tell you is that most of these things are based on falsehood. There are no scientific basis to say that genetically modified organisms you go back to go and buy from the farmer that they will not grow. Mm. Look, when you, you genetically modified organisms, can, can they you are being terminated. That, yes. Can you yes. prove that? Yes, genetically modified. If you want to go back to the company to buy more seed, you can go back and buy more seed. But the issue of why the company is advising for you to go back and buy new seeds is that over time, just like malaria, the drugs become resistant, the, the, the malaria strain become resistant against the drug. It is not the GMO that is failing, but the organisms that they are being fought against by any other chemical becomes a problem. But this chemical you're talking about has been used since 1970. And it's not peculiar to, to GMOs alone. And again, the issue of saying that uh, the, the GMOs have chemicals, they don't have. It's just, for instance, vitamin A, has it been known to have any adverse impact? These genetically modified, they are not the same. It, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it only natural natural substances that yes. are used for this modification? It is possibly. natural substances. And again, scientifically it has been proven there is nothing like a horizontal gene transfer. It can't. It cannot. And again, even the genes you consume, once you have consumed them, 
They are no more. They are no more potent. They are no longer be transferred. They are no more alive. No. Let, let me take you back to the issue of um, you know the seeds having to buy from manufacturers and, and all of that. Uh, are you saying that when uh, when a crop is genetically um, modified, mm. when that crop, the seeds from that crop can sit, still be replanted? Very well, can still be replanted for so many years. The only thing I'm saying is that over time, the particular seed. Why they fail, just like any other hybrid, is that the, if, for instance, if it's, if it's uh, resistant against pests, the pest will not develop resistance, fight back. That is what we have in malaria. That's why you are having various drugs in malaria. It is natural, it's just like a human being, a human body. With time, you develop even resistance against the way you are exposed to it. Like the issue of vaccine. What the vaccines are, the, they are the thousands of that particular disease that are and I put into vaccines. So it is not peculiar to GMO that will, I'm not defending it, but I want Nigerians to understand that mm -hmm. most of these things is a trade war. The it, chemical yes, company, yeah, let me just land. Let me say you are not, not defending it, but all yes. you're saying is for, for the yes. GMOs. What I'm saying for GMOs is because I'm regulating it, and when we are regulating it, we make sure it has advantages. That's why I asked you earlier. That's why I asked you earlier. Yes. Has a policy on that technology to promote, and even agencies and research institutes. So this to agency, GMO. yes, this institute, the essence of my research, my my agency is to regulate to ensure that it's only those products that are safe. Okay, that, that's, why, that's why. That's why. products. That's why I asked yeah. those products that are safe. Mm. Has your agency? I don't know if your mandate includes carrying out your own yeah. forensic investigations yeah. into whatever has been done to modify them, whether it is safe enough for Nigerians, and has such studies been made public? Let me tell you, prior to the, to the creation of the agency, yes. a lab has been, we have a genetically modified organism uh, detection lab already established. Where, where is it? It's presently domiciled in the National Bacteria Development Agency. That lab has the competence to detect the smallest material that is genetically enhance it put into another organism and the staff of the agency are working up to the master's level within and outside the country on gm detection g analysis and risk analysis and risk, risk management risk analysis and risk management mm -hmm. so nigeria is adequately prepared so the idea of saying before any genetically organism is going to be released in this country i want to assure nigerians the agency will ensure that nothing Advanced to be released into the Nigerian All right. So, and so, so you no officially down. genetically modified organism in Nigeria that have been released officially mm -hmm. for commercial purpose. All right. The ones we have so far are for experimental purposes. Okay, so experimental purposes so far. And your investigations and your experiments and research have shown that um, mm -hmm. for now, uh, what nothing you advanced. nothing adverse. Are you are you then saying that there? absolutely no disadvantages, I mean, no side effects to genetically motiv uh, modified um, organisms. The way you say there are no side effects, the way you talk about risk, risk is hazard times exposure. When you eat anything too much, it's just like, even if, you, even if it's the conventional corn, when you continue to eat corn continuously, even when you continue to drink water, will you tell me there will be no, no adverse impact? So as far as we are concerned, we will ensure that there is safety before any genetically modified organism in Nigeria is released for either for planting for consumption. So the fear that uh, GMOs will just come into Nigeria, and these GMOs, let me say one thing, they are not going to be imported from Ni outside the country alone. Some of them are going to be developed by Nigerian scientists. And Nigeria will not stand by and watch the world and remain obsolete in technology. Nigeria will move, on, move ahead with safe technologies. Mm. But, the the but, but, but the world is still very cautious about this. Of course, that's why we have the agency there to ensure safety. All right, um, uh, Ruth Viber, in the Lego Center, I don't know how you react to some of these issues which he has raised here. He says there's really no cause for alarm. Uh, these things are technology driven and the world is going uh, driven by technology. So is, is, it, is, it, is it a sound enough argument for Nigerians to fly with? A lot of omissions that he has left out. I mean, if if we even step out from the whole arena of just treating ideas and just opinions, we can look at case studies, for instance, in India. It's not just about having a seed and you can plant it for as long as you like until the seed then becomes prone to um, these diseases or 
the oversimplification that he has explained. These companies claim patent rights on these seeds. It is illegal to be replanting these seeds. Court cases exist all over America where these companies take farmers to court because they are seen planting these seeds. These companies alter a seed that exists naturally and then claim the rights over it. So for instance, in India today, let's talk about realistic case studies that are happening so we can ground this conversation in reality. In India today, last week, India has said to some of these biotech companies that they might have to leave the country because the cost of these seeds are extremely high and farmers cannot afford to be buying these seeds. Previous to that, in India, over a period of 10 years, about 300,000 suicides were recorded. Why? Because BT cotton that was planted there failed. They made promises that these crops would resist um, bollworm, they would use less chemicals like gentlemen in studio said, but a case study and facts have shown that those, those plants failed in that promise and then BC and bollworm, bollworm was attacking those plants and also they used five times more chemicals than was originally agreed. And in, in doing that, these, these farmers got into so much debt that they actually just, they just killed themselves. They actually killed themselves ironically using the herbicides or pesticides that they bought from these companies. We can go to our neighbor, we don't even have to go to as far as India, we can go to our neighbor in Burkina Faso who last week have taken Monsanto to court for $84 million because the BT cotton that was produced there, the quality failed. So they've not been able to export as much as their counterparts who does natural um, cotton, Mali, and because, for a main reason that their fiber quality is poor. So people are not buying it. So it is a lot more than the oversimplification of we put vitamin E. These things are... This is, the, this is the kind of thought process that these kind of corporations are using. I have a chemical. I want to sell this chemical. This chemical kills everything apart from a bacteria that has Bt gene in the soil. So instead of thinking about a more creative way to handle this situation, because this chemical is number one over people's health, over the ecological factors, over the cost it will do to smallholder farmers, I will instead modify the plant to resist my chemical. So you see the hierarchy and priority of this business model. It's about selling chemicals. It's about the plant modified so that it can withstand these things. And the fact of the matter is, it has been recorded, it is a fact that resistant weeds have grown, called super weeds now. Resistant um, pests and insects have grown to resist all these things. And then what happens? Year after year, the farmers put, um, use more stronger chemicals and stronger chemicals and stronger chemicals, all of this toxifying the environment. And then when we bring it to Nigeria's own situation, our brothers in, and sisters in the hinterlands, they don't have huge water corporations that are purifying their water and sending it to them, to their farms. They go to water bodies and fetch water that they use for drinking or whatever. Because these chemicals are not biodegradable, and also the IARC of the World Health Organization re recently classified most of the active ingredients in these chemicals as carcinogenic. These are facts. These are no speculations. They did that in March last year. Now, these chemicals will be sprayed, and then rain carries it down into the water bodies. And all over the world, people have made statements and taking these companies called for contamination of these water bodies and contamination of toxins and the effect it even has on wildlife. There are scientists that have come out that have shown that astrazine produced by Syngenta, for instance, has an effect of making frogs hermaphrodites affect India and Burkina Faso. Very, very important. Sorry, sir. Just, just a second. You react to that. Whoever will come to you, hopefully, we'll have enough time. But let's have, we have joining us now the uh, Professor Morrissey Wu. Of course, he's a leading pharmacologist, former INI chair, but his real work is actually uh, a pharmacy. And he wants to weigh into this discussion as well. Professor Wu, thank you so much for joining us. Professor, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. 
All right. Good, good morning, and thank you very much for, for joining us. Now, you've heard our, our conversation so far. Our guests um, have tried to explain or have explained to us what um, the genetically motivated um, organisms are. And while um, Mr. Rufus here says, for now, there is no danger, um, our guest in Lagos, uh, Mr. Badibo Rhodes, is saying that there, there's a lot of danger attached to this, um, you know, to the GMO. What is your own stance? Yeah, my stand, I agree with the commentator who is trying to call for caution. The agency should concern itself at this time with uh, shadow trailing the GMO research. They, are, they don't have the capacity as we speak to be able to do that. Their job should be to harness the work going on in the university so that we are on top of the game. Before you get into this complex issue, you have to master the game, know what is going on. A situation where they don't have light, they don't have uh, centrifuges that work, they don't even know the genotypes of the material that they are bringing in, that is really very, very dangerous. The, what the, the commentator was saying was completely right. And what the director from uh, the, the this agency is saying is actually uh, oversimplifying a very complex situation. What we should do at this time is to be part of the game, but not to allow introduction of any GMO into this country for now, but to be able to sh shadow, follow what is going on, and be able to understand the, the technique. And he said that they have uh, scientists on the master's degree level. What a shame. A country where we have PhD holders and professors in that area, and an agency that having up to the people of the master's degree level. And those are the people we want to entrust our lives to. These things take years to manifest. And some of the genes that are introducing will not know the outcome or the effect until decades to come. I, tell, I don't think we should modify the future of our future generation just because we want to satisfy some people in the West who want to make more money. Mm. All right, thank you very much, Prof. Let, let's quickly get a reaction. Yes, of, um, let me quickly react the to agencies Professor DJ. Morris Iwu's uh, point. Professor Maurice, Morris Iwu failed to understand that Nigeria has a lot of human resources. When I talk about master's level, to, uh, master's level in biosafety, I'm not talking about the research aspect or development of the GMO. Nigerians, you have a lot of people who have the ability to develop GMOs in this country. Mm -hmm. Even those who have the knowledge to be able to apply it in the regulation of GMOs. In terms of the capacity of that Let me tell you, he has not been able to understand what is going on on ground. I, sold, I told you, we have a lab that can detect GMOs and analyze them. So if he's speaking from his own point, he probably has not understood that the agency has grown beyond what he is imagining. This is a regulatory agency that has the capacity to be able to detect the smallest gene. And trainings have been on over the years. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, this agency we did not just emerge yesterday. It has been a unit under the Federal Ministry of Environment. I have been on issues of biosafety for over, over, over 15 years. And let me tell you one thing. When you look at Nigeria as if Nigeria doesn't know what is going, what is going on, Nigeria was a member of the United Nations Expert Group on Biosafety Risk Assessment to develop for the world. Nigeria is also playing active role in the West African sub-region to have a sub regional biosafety regulation. Come on, one. But he's also, also, he's, hmm? he's also saying that um, Nigeria at this point should take caution. And that's that why the agency this. will take caution. The agency is not just going to bring in any genetically modified organism to this country. Our university, our university experts, Science. professors, yes. university experts in Nigeria, researchers involved in what the agency is doing. Let me tell you one thing. The agency does not just take a unilateral decision. We, 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 we do what is we normally organize national biosafety committees when there's any application. We invite people who are experienced in various fields as it relates to that particular application to look at them so that they have a transparency in the process. Mm -hmm. And in that case, we look at experts and we look at their professors, they are also doctors and those who have knowledge. Economists are even there to analyze it because decision considerations go beyond. All right. the, let, let me just land the other issue because it's very important. Very, very quick quick on because we are almost out of time. Yes, now. see the issue of uh, India and Burkina Faso. The farmers who committed suicide in India was because, one, what they did was that they took loans and the first set of GMOs they had, there were some terms and conditions they were supposed to follow, they didn't follow, and that year there was a serious drought. And those who, commit, who, 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 who took loans could not bear the fact that they couldn't pay their loans, and they committed and they are linking into GMO. It was not only GMO. Mm -hmm. Then Burkina Faso, the issue they have is that of cutting. The length of the cutting is, it was very, very short. 
and it's not because of the GMO, but because it was the particular germ plasm that was modified that the gene was put into. It had the ability, but the lint was so small. And Burkina Faso is a very good example of the farmers. If you listen to them, they are very they are very happy with their products. I'm not telling this but I'm only telling you Nigeria should be given opportunity to use safe technology. Government has established this agency to ensure that all associated risks are properly scrutinized before anything in decision is taken. Yeah. Uh, again, the issue of socioeconomic is very, very important. Farmers are going to be highly protected. Mm. Nobody is going to say because uh, farmers are bossy for them, they will continue to go back and take them. No, their attempts are conditioned. Mm. Nigerian farmers will be protected. Okay. All right, Thank we, you. we, we really you. must go now. We're out of time. We, we're out of time. Mm. But, but quickly, let's um, take a tweet or two at um, Sami, Sami Oroops is saying, kindly leave our food as natural as they are. Well, uh, a quick reaction coming in, a tweet coming in from Nimbo Basi, of course, Nimbo Basi. A lot of reactions coming in from this particular story, this particular discussion, says a lot about the need for advocacy, a lot of caution, a lot of debate and enlightenment on it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I yeah, uh, but, yes, we, we do have um, more tweets. GMOs have reduced the use of pesticides and herbicides. The only thing, have not, I beg your pardon, reduced the use of pesticides and herbicides. The only thing they have reduced is biodiversity. Okay, I get it. That's a bit. That's, no, no, we're, we're out of time. I'm sorry. Another time. Sorry. Uh, so many issues coming yeah. up, but yes. we promise to bring you back so All we right, can talk about it. Thank you so much.